We're going to go back 4,000 years in time to the time of King David. Now, King David had five wives. Why any man would do that to himself is beyond understanding. <laughs> but he had five of them. And now we need to decide on our committee which one of these women is going to be the mother of the next king of Israel. He's going to be King Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived. This was during Solomon, or uh, this was during Israel's golden age. It was the best time Israel ever had it. It was glorious. They, you talk about a run on the stock market. I mean, prosperity, no wars. It was fantastic because this king was so incredible. Who is going to be the mama of this king and then become the great, great, great grandmother of the Lord Jesus Christ himself? Kind of an important decision, right? Now, ladies, you would think wife number one, right? She should have dibs. She was there first. But we know it wasn't her because uh, David got mad at her and quit having sex with her, which is easy to do if you have four more in the wings. <laughs> and you probably want to discount wife number five. You remember her, Bathsheba? The only reason she's there is because of lust, lying, adultery, and murder. King David saw her taking a bath. See, that's what lust will do to you. Saw her taking a bath, seduced her, had sex with her, got her pregnant, and then murdered her husband to hide the whole thing and married her. There's nothing holy about this. There's nothing right about this. God never intended for that woman to be in the house. <laughs> but the truth is, when somebody hurts us, we want them to pay. So our version of making them pay is we get bitter and unforgiving. I'm not going to forgive you. The problem is the only one that hurts is the person who doesn't want to forgive. Unforgiveness is like taking poison hoping the other guy will die. <laughs> and to be truthful with you, I've, I've never understood how so many people have a problem in this area, particularly Christians. You know, if you're not much of a church goer, take a nap for a minute, but but you Christians, I, you know, this is Christianity 101. This is as foundational as it gets. Jesus taught us basically this. If you don't forgive people, God won't forgive you. It's that simple. So I don't believe that. No, you'll get an exception because you're so cute. <laughs> you're kidding yourself. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive, the, forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us as we forgive. God will not forgive you if you don't forgive people. This is non-negotiable. You need to hear it. But a lot of people, they struggle with it. They're like, oh, it's so hard. Because you don't understand what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is an act. It is not an emotion. It has nothing to do with your emotions. You might feel the pain of what that person did to you till the day you die. It has nothing to do with forgiveness. It's not an erasure of your memory. You might remember what that person did to you till the day that you die. And let me ask you a question. Do you think God has Alzheimer's? Do you, do you think he can't remember what you did? Do you think he looks at you and goes, something about you really ticks me off. Like, <laughs> can't remember what it was. He throws in what he calls the sea of his forgetfulness. He doesn't have Alzheimer's. He just, he, he just will never bring it up again. He'll never mention it again. That's what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is this. It's when you say, I forgive you. I will never use it against you in the future. I will never speak of it again to you or to anyone else. Forgiveness has more to do with your tongue than your head or your heart. If you're still talking it through, you haven't forgiven. You need to hush. You need to let it go. That's forgiveness. All right, what'd you decide? Which lady? God steps in and says, ah, forget about it. I made my decision. Oh, yeah, really, which one? He says, number five. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. God. Do you know who this is? This is Bathsheba. The only reason this woman is there is because of lust, lying, adultery, and murder. There's nothing holy about it. There's nothing righteous about it. It was never in God's plan. God never intended it. But Bathsheba becomes the mother of Solomon and the great, 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 great grandmother of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. 
You could make the argument, had it not been for lust, lying, adultery, and murder, Solomon would have never been born. You could make the argument, had it not been for lust, lying, adultery, and murder, the Lord Jesus would have never been born. Oh, well, praise the Lord that happened then. <laughs> See, you're not making any sense. I know this was hard even for the writers of the Bible. If you read Matthew, the first chapter, where it says so-and-so was the father of so-and-so was the father of so-and-so, that whole, that whole list, he mentions three women by name, but when he comes to her, he doesn't even mention her name. If you read it, it'll say, the wife of Uriah. Uriah was the man David killed to get her. Wouldn't even mention her name. Why? Because it, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. How can this possibly be? How could the son of God's lineage depend on a woman who was only there because of lust, lying, adultery, and murder? I'll tell you how. Because God's love is so powerful. He can take your biggest mistake and turn it into something so beautiful it won't make sense to anybody. That is the power of the reset button. I want all the couples to stand together. If you're not here with your husband or wife, or if you're not married, you can stay seated. But if you're here with your husband or wife, I want you to stand up. And I want you to turn to each other. I thought you said we weren't going to do anything emotional. <laughs> It'll be all right. I'll even tell you what to say. And all the guys looking at the girls, I want you to repeat this. Well, I don't need to repeat it. Well, then just say it for the rest of us poor slobs who do. <laughs> looking at your wife, guys, I want you to say this. Honey, I'm sorry. For not always being the kind of husband I should be to you. For not giving you the attention you deserve. For being too caught up in my own instead of our world, for demanding too much and not giving enough, for not loving you like I should. Please forgive me. With your love, your support, your patience, and your prayers, I will strive to be the kind of husband God wants me to be. Now, girls, your turn. Looking at him, I want you to say this. Say, honey, I'm sorry for not always being the kind of wife I should be to you. For not always appreciating all that you do. For not always being the lover I know you need. For not always believing your hopes and dreams for not loving you like I should. Please forgive me. With your love, your support, your patience, and your prayers, I will strive to be the kind of wife God wants me to be. I want you to press the reset button. The way this works is to reach over and you plant one right on her. Give her a kiss. All right, hug the girl, hug the girl, hug the girl, hug the girl. Did that feel good? I don't understand. He made us laugh. And then he, and then he made us cry.